this work was developed by Mariana Ribeiro as, um, as in her master's thesis. And I, I was the co-supervisor of the work together with Professor Vanessa Cesario. And uh, <clears throat> moving to the next slide. So what was the motivation of uh, this work? So we wanted to analyze how storytelling plays an important role in video games and especially in, in terms of localization of the storytelling and what is the effect in, in emotion. For that, we focus on role-playing games and we use The Witcher 3 um, as the game to study this effect. So the main objective was to validate the importance of the storytelling component together with influence of the localization process and whether this has an impact on players' immersion in video games. So we selected The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Um, of course, this is a, a game that has a very interesting narrative that um, and is also a, a very popular game. So it was selected because we had some easiness to, to, pro to provide uh, experimentation because for that we, the, 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 the persons involved will have to, to have the, the game. Um, and the methodology for this study is as follows. So we did a quasi-experimental methodological approach. So started by a survey and written consent for the study. And then the, the, the involved persons were had to play the game and then uh, answer the questionnaires uh, this was a, a within subject study design, so we had two control groups, and we have one control group, of course, and um, then and finally we have some in structured interviews with players. So regarding ages, and um, it is of course more focused on the students in higher education, so we have more people in around from 17 to 30 years old. Um, all the people knew the game, uh, so, so almost all the people knew the game, only a small percentage did not know the, the game. Um, and from these people that we surveyed, 59% played the game. Some of those people have played the English version and only a few the Brazilian Portuguese version. So this was what we was used for localization. And uh, most of them play games daily or even often. So how it worked. So we had a random distribution of 126 players into two groups, A and B. Um, they had to play approximately two hours of the, the Witcher 3. Um, group A started to play the English version and then the, the Brazilian Portuguese version. And group B had the opposite uh, order of the, the, the games and uh, the, the versions of the game. So, <clears throat> The questionnaires were about, they, they portray the game experience and the transport narrative. So questions about the gameplay, immersion, entertainment, and the characters. But we could only uh, have 41 answers uh, from these, these 126 players that uh, initially were surveyed. So um, in this game experience questionnaire, we approach uh, in a, in a, a five-point scale. We approach three strategic questions about sensory and imaginative immersion, flow, competence, positive effect, negative effect, tension and annoyance, and challenge. So overall, the results um, were positive. So, but more positive to the English version. So the players felt that the Brazilian Portuguese did not have the same quality of immersion as the English version, the original version. And uh, after that, we followed some interviews and 61% uh, said that the localized version could have uh, a big impact on the immersion. And uh, while 6% did not have that uh, impression. So indeed, um, immersion, belonging and connection uh, were preferred in the English version for 80% of the people, while the story conveyance and, and adaptation were preferred for 87% of the people uh, in, for the English version as well. So um, 
the things that we we, if we we understood and in the paper you can see some of the guidelines is that so voice acting should be very careful to portray the same amount of emotion in the in the language we have to translate and adapt content based on the culture and because for example in different cultures we have different sayings so the expressions that could be interesting in one language or culture will not be in another one. Um, there's also a preference in language and familiarity. And for example, in, in Portuguese, uh, of course, Portuguese that, that live in Portugal and Portuguese that live in Brazil, they have preference for slightly different versions of the Portuguese language. So this, uh, of course, apl uh, applies to English and other languages and cultures. Also, the symbolism and the culture, uh, what is allowed or um, proper in each culture is different. So content translation is quite uh, difficult and should be done very careful. I think that in a way we can see that, for example, in movies. So movies, when they are translated, they hire very well-known actors, for example, they translate the, even the titles sometimes are translated differently to, to, to cope with the, the, the localized version. So there should be a very, uh, investment, a lot of investment in this localization. And conclusion. So, um, and we had two primarily research questions. How do we link storytelling development to a bigger immersion and enjoyment of a specific genre of video game? So bigger connection and involvement with storytelling means bigger immersion and sense of belonging. And of course, this well, it is, it is also known. So many studies already bring uh, storytelling as one of key vectors of immersion together with technology and uh, agency, for example. And the second research question was, does localization affect the connection the users develop with the story and the video game? And uh, well, some video game plus different localizations, we had different connections with story and characters. So localization affects um, the, the, the connection to the game and the story or the characters and the story and the characters, of course. Um, and how do these errors affect the transmission of the same story and overall video game in different cultural contexts? Well, look at the target language. Some core modifications should be done. Look for censorship. Um, and this will mean the transmission of content, but make changes to original developed game equals loss of content. So we should be aware that sometimes translation can lose some of the original version. So we have to upgrade this uh, regarding each culture. So the, in the paper, you can see some developed game design patterns to enhance video game immersion. Um, we have some uh, conclude some studies condition. We, we have presented some conclusion. Of course, there are some limitations by using only one role playing game. Um, while Witcher 3 only offers 15 languages, so we can only do that for those. And of course, we could have used other RPGs and different genres of game for that. So thank you very much, and uh, looking forward for your questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Anton. So, any questions? Uh, if you allow me, maybe I have one. Um... Uh, uh, well, you mentioned also language issue. So I mean, the adaptation of the text in a, in a localization. Um, quite, uh, let's say, maybe 15 years ago, uh, we performed an experiment um, asking to people to uh, um, uh, to to say which kind of uh, emotion can be transmitted, for example, by a certain language. Okay, <laughs> and we perform this experiment with uh, Italian sentences, and we ask to Italian people, Brazilian people, to uh, uh, to say which kind of uh, uh, emotion will be uh, has been conveyed by the the text. And actually, we uh, discovered that uh, maybe to the uh, uh, intonation of the language, 
uh, Brazilian people has the tendency to um, uh, perceive much more than the Italian one, the rage and the anger. And uh, uh, in another language, because maybe it's very the, the Brazilian one is very sweet. Let's say sometimes it's very sounding sweet, more than Italian that is already considered very uh, uh, um, uh, sweet uh, singing uh, uh, language. So my question is: uh, Could the different language that is used uh, and the emotion that has perceived because of this make also the difference. Mm -hmm. Not Very just the translation, I mean, the, the syntax of the translation. Exactly. So the very, very, in, 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 very important question. Indeed, so what we notice is sometimes, for example, people prefer to, 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 play, to, to, to play the game in the English version, even if they are not native English speakers because they feel that the emotion of the language is much more portrayed in the English for that game, because the game was, and the narrative was developed in English, for example, than in Portuguese. Of course, we, uh, if the Portuguese version is uh, worked upon uh, a multidisciplinary team, and we have seen that as well from previous um, articles, a multidisciplinary team can observe this. So we can use the expressive power of the language and use that to um, to also focus more on the different cultures. So some cultures will prefer a more uh, simple, less emotive uh, narrative, while other cultures might uh, would like a more enhanced and more um, vivid narrative. Uh, and the languages can also develop that. We can see that, for example, in poetry, uh, we see that there are very different uh, amounts of emotion and uh, amplitude of the, um, the narrative itself uh, in different languages. So I, I agree completely. So it's a very important issue. And so localization is not translation. So it's much more. It's how to adequate all the concepts. Even for example, in this case, we have Polish mytho mytho uh, mythology. So that mythology may not have the same impact in different cultures because they might be aware of this myth mythology or not. So uh, there's a lot of uh, issues around that, but of course, then it goes beyond the, the, the concept of the whole game and we, we should always almost create a new game. So we have to balance how can we localize the version, uh, uh, taking advantage of the language, of the culture, to keep the same emotions. And I think that's the key. Thank you very much. The key is the emotions we want to portray by using the, by this game. Uh, Liliana, can I just add on a comment to what uh, Carlo and Antonio was sharing here with us? Um, we are coming here from the um, Communication and Media Research Center and Department, and it's uh, it's exactly that. And if we put it in a communication context, or more specifically a situation, as you were mentioning, Antonio, uh, the localization can go directly down to very, very specific cultural issues. And that's extremely demanding to do things, uh, as you were mentioning. So this is uh, in, in many areas here, we were speaking, of course, of this uh, game context. But nowadays we have the AI models very in context also. And right. it's amazing how this really can mess up a training data set if you are not careful with these very specific cultural uh, contexts and if it has to do with the dialogue with a with a narrative in your case it's amazing how everything can go wrong if you are not aware of the cultural issues one of our tests was with portuguese we didn't even go to other languages carlo it's like european portuguese and brazilian portuguese and the differences in a very specific situation communication situation it's amazing the differences so we got a good issue there and it's nice for research of course mm -hmm.